What I'm really excited to see is how this training on Flight Sim is going to apply in his real world flight training when he gets to it. Well, there's a truck. Hey, bud. You wanna do your whole thing? A few days ago, I posted a video about Flight Sim, specifically the flight training in simulators, and if that could help you with real world flight training, specifically MSFS. This is covering a topic that I've always found really interesting. Can you use flight sims to help you with real world flight training? I have been teaching people on Flight Simulator the full PPL syllabus, and one of them, his online name being Null, has agreed to participate a little bit in this experiment by sharing a recording of one of his flights. And he's just reached the point where he would be doing the first solo, so the first solo circuits if he were doing real world flight training. Noel actually plans on doing his real world flight training at some point. All right, uh, all right. So this is me, Noel, and I'm going to go through and do my checklists. Uh, let me do my belts and harnesses. Click, good job. My fuel shut off is off, mm, should be on. Let's turn that on. My electrical equipment is all off, except I know the ADF defaults to on as does the radio. So I'm, I'm seeing the sort of airmanship that I would expect from a student pilot. And just to get prepped, I'm actually gonna uh, put in the tower at 118.1 just because. Small things like setting the tower frequency on standby ahead of time shows me that Noel is thinking ahead of the game. He's several steps ahead of the aircraft, which is exactly where I want him to be. So first of all, although the flows are excellent and the checklist items are done correctly, I am struggling to see some coherence there. I have taught to do flows followed by checklists, where we declare the start of the checklist, we go through the items, and then we declare the checklist completed. And here, I can't really tell when Null is doing a flow and when Null is doing a checklist. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so that's my electrical equipment is on, my nav lights. I'm turning on my... Uh... Land light, taxi light, nav, and strobe. The fact that he turned on all the other lights while he's still at the apron shows me that he's not quite clear as to when he should turn those lights on and off. And so uh, that's on me. That's something I need to train into him. Charlotte Clearance, this is November, November Uniform Lima Lima, Cessna Type Skyhawk at General Aviation Parking, Ramp 6 Tree, with information char Charlie ready to copy for VFR in pattern. He declared himself as a Type Skyhawk which, of course, the Cessna 152 isn't. Thankfully, the controller picked up on it and asked him to clarify the aircraft type, most likely because the controller was a little confused by that. Now, when Null requested the, the, the clearance, he requested to remain in the, tr in the pattern. Nothing wrong with that, but I believe the correct terminology in the US is closed traffic. I have pulled up my airport diagram and 36 right is very, very close to us. My guess is that he's going to assign, or tower is going to assign me to uh, Delta, hold short of Delta one for 36 right, but I will I'm expecting that. I'm open to change. One thing I really liked is that Null briefed himself using the airport diagram, the expected taxiway routing, and then confirmed it with himself after he got the clearance. That's fantastic. Not only that, when he wasn't sure where to go, he stopped the aircraft and checked the chart before continuing. Now, it was pretty obvious after a while because there was only one taxiway, but he thought there were two. He wasn't sure, he had doubt, and so he checked. And that's exactly the sort of mindset we want to see. Charlotte Tower, November, November Uniform, Lima Lima, says the type Skyhawk at General Aviation Parking, ready to taxi to 36 right. So first of all, he said ready to taxi to runway 36, right? Nothing wrong with that, but really you should just say uh, request taxi or ready to taxi. One thing I really liked as well that's quite subtle is that Null looked both ways before getting onto the taxi. He's checking that the taxiway is clear before entering it. Fantastic. He's also using idle power before breaking the aircraft while he was taxiing. Very good. Taxi was quite quick. He did try to lean the mixture. Now, it was, a, it was a bit of a poor man's effort. He wasn't too sure, I think, what to do. So he erred on the safe side and only pulled the mixture a bit. Uh, as far as I know, most flight instructors don't teach students to lean the mixture on taxi. I, on the other hand, like to teach people how to lean on taxi. You can lean quite aggressively in taxi as long as you don't add a lot of power. But I think there's just a fear behind that. And that's because most people don't really get taught 
to use the mixture lever until much later on after they got the PPL, which frankly is a mistake. Right close traffic, 3-6 right, uh, clear for takeoff, uniform Lima Lima. Uh, tower uniform Lima Lima, just to let you know, I am going to do my run up, so I'll, I'm going to be a second. He's telling ATC what he needs. ATC is there to provide a service, not to give him uh, sort of orders. And Noel recognized that and he requested what he needed, which was more time. There was no uh, takeoff briefing. That's something I would have liked to see. We haven't really discussed briefings in the lessons, which is something that I would have had students practice by themselves. The issue is I've mostly been teaching in groups, so I can't really spend a lot of time getting everyone to brief a departure. And so this is a shortcoming of group teaching that could be overcome by one-on-one -on -one instruction. Now, at least we're starting to get data about this, which is really exciting for me. I could absolutely use Delta 2 for this, I'm sure, but I'm going to go to all the way to Delta 1. Good, he's thinking ahead. However, the clearance was to go to Delta 1, so it's a little bit irrelevant at that point. Right close. He let the power, uh, the engine power at idle instead of setting it back to 1000 RPM. It's really easy to do in Flight Simulator because you don't have the, the feedback of the engine angrily shaking at you. It runs a little rougher than it should and you get a little worried. So you always set it at 1000 RPM anyways. It's good for it to make sure you're not fouling the spark plugs. Checking my whiskey compass, I should be headed dead west. That looks good to me. Uh... His mind is whirring as he's trying to remember if he's forgotten anything. Now, it's good in the sense that he's really making sure that he's got everything down. However, it's showing to me that he doesn't have the flows down properly yet and that he's maybe not using the checklist as efficiently as possible. I don't know, for some reason, he was a little thrown off. However, he took his time and made things right. Uh, I'm going to check my carb heat by pulling it. And I see a fall. That looks good. Put my carb heat back in the carb heat intake the air intake is unfiltered and so when you're on the ground you can quite easily pick up a lot of dirt and crap that can go into the engine so we're really just testing to see that the power drops and then closing it again now null did a check that isn't on the checklist uh, and that i didn't teach him as he said which is to when he put the power back to idle turning on the carb heat and leaning the mixture that's a new one for me i don't really see the point of that i need to do some research on that if someone's watching this knows why someone recommended that to know, please let me know. I, off the top of my head, head can't see any benefit from it. And turn on my pedo heat, and now I'm ready. That's something I never taught him to do. Um, there's no harm again in turning on the pedo heat, uh, but it's a VFR flight, unlikely for the pedo to get blocked by ice. I'd rather he picks up the habit of turning it on when he doesn't need to, uh, than not turning it on at all. As long as he turns it off uh, when on the ground and stationary so that we don't overheat it. I also really like the fact that he's checked the final approach and that he's checking that he's on the correct runway as he lines up before taking off. I'm gonna fly a runway heading and then move right to climb to uh, 1,800 feet for my pattern. Airspeed is alive. I'm now at my rotation speed, rotating. When Noel was talking through the takeoff, he didn't check the engine instruments, and then he rotated a little late. And then not only did he do that, he didn't pitch for the best attitude. We're, we're looking for VX initially, and then VY. Still flying a good heading. I'm drifting a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I fly right there, and I could be pitching quite a bit more, so I'm gonna do that to get up a little higher. For me, flight sim is never about the physical skill of flying the aircraft. It's more about trying to get what you want and performing the flows and checklists appropriately. I am too far from the airport, one would say. Although the circuit is wide, which isn't good, he notices it, which is good. Clear to land, 3-6 right, full stop, uniform Lima Lima. Um, I'm now a beam the edge of the uh, runway that I want and I'm going to hit flaps 10 because I'm in the white arc. So when Noel reached the end of the downwind, he went ahead and correctly added flaps, but he didn't call a speed check. I'm sure he did it knowing Noel and seeing how he's been performing so far. But again, really important to verbalize these things. Speed check, flaps 10. I'm going to turn on my landing light and my taxi light. My taxi light goes on now? Maybe. 
different flight schools will give you different procedures but in the circuit i like to have both on anyways all the time a little high i could be descending a bit actually i thought he was doing quite well borderline low but what i care about is that null is checking and this is what's really important so my car push my car heat so it's in fantastic probably not an issue at charlotte where you've got a very long runway but in the future when he's flying on shorter fields that's going to be massively beneficial now null has a tendency to pitch for altitude and power for speed on the final approach so i was happy to see that he was pitching a little bit for speed however as he has a tendency to do when he's very low to the ground he's very afraid of pitching that nose down he's stable on the approach he's got a touchdown zone on the screen and it's not moving relative to the dashboard that's fantastic especially when sins are really hard to fly and the fact that he's able to do this on a flight sim gives me a lot of confidence about when he tries to do it in real life for the first time all right i'm gonna cut my engine start my flare Pretty good about that landing. I'm pull back on my mixture and put up my flaps. Was he pulling the mixture to lean it for taxi? Uh, I don't want him to do this. I've never taught him to do this, but I think because I've taught him to, to lean on the ground, especially at idle, that may be where that confusion is coming from. That's something that me as the instructor, I need to address now when I speak to him next. Also, no went ahead and brought back the, back up the flaps on the runway. And a Cessna 172, 152, a Tomahawk, Piper Warrior, whatever, that's not too much of an issue. But I want to stamp out that habit right now. I want him to only retract the flaps once he's vacated the runway. And the reason for that is that when he starts flying complex aircraft with, with uh, retractable landing gears, there's a risk that he could accidentally bring the gear up. I haven't been told to exit the runway, but I feel like that's coming. Charlotte Tower, uniform Lima Lima, may I exit the runway? You don't need permission to vacate the runway. You just do it. And again, I like to see that he's checking the taxiways before crossing them. He's looking for traffic. And he's turned on ground vehicles, as we noticed a few times. All right. And this seems like a good enough place. I'm pretty sure this is basically where I started. When Null stops at the apron, he's using idle power. I want to see him set 1,000 RPM every time he, st he stops on a taxiway somewhere, uh, not to foul the spark plugs. Uh, really, you only pull to idle right before you're gonna pull the mixture. Um, we'll do mixture, we'll do the uh, cutoff here. And then this will stop my engine. I'll do my magnetos. Null, no, it's really important that when you're stopping the engine, you're pulling the mixture to starve it from fuel. If you turn off the magnetos, there's nothing to burn that fuel because the spark plugs aren't firing. So when you pull that mixture, wait until the engine stops so that you completely burn off the fuel inside the cylinders. That's something a real world student would never do because they would have gone through dozens of lessons with a flight instructor where the instructor would make sure they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I think I'm shut down. All right, I'm turning off my master now. I can't come up with a final conclusion right now because Noel hasn't started real world flight training and we haven't gone through the entire syllabus yet. The things I really care about, the airmanship, checking things you understand, ensuring that you got the information you want, the correct sort of use of your resources available, all that has been performed astonishingly well. So what's the next step in this experiment? I want to address the things that need to be addressing, to be addressed right now. The sort of things that shouldn't be happening for a student who has just gone solo. So once all those are addressed, we can move on to the next part of training, which will be the advanced maneuvers and then navigation and so forth. My hope is that his knowledge when he enters a flight school will be almost on par with pilots who already have their private certificate and better than most if not all the students there. If you're interested in experiencing a session like the ones Noel has been attending, then make sure to come over this Friday to the seminar. Yes, I'm bringing the seminar up again. A colleague of mine and I are 
doing a seminar on the procedural ILS approach where we're going to teach folks how to perform an ILS uh, approach correctly. If you're interested in that, check the link in the comment below where you'll be able to attend. There are limited spaces. It's available on Friday. I believe there are eight spaces left. So jump on as soon as you can. But that's it for now. I'm Tarek Merife. See you guys next time and happy flying. Thank you.